What really came through to me when I spoke to him was what a fine line it can be between being a genius and succeeding and failure. Um, I'll say some of the good things about Lampert here. First of all, he is the first to acknowledge he was a contrarian. Most people thought from the get-go that putting two failing retailers together, Kmart and Sears, was just doubling down on failure. He had a vision for it. And when you really think back on it, the great fortunes are made because somebody does take a contrarian view. You, you don't become a billionaire by following the herd. Okay, secondly, he stuck with it forever. And people were saying, this is crazy, you know, you're going down with the ship, why are you doing that? But again, if this had actually worked, look how long Jeff Bezos stuck with Amazon, you know, decades of losses. And he's hailed as, you know, having brilliance and conviction. So I give him actually credit for those things. But the sad fact is, he, most contrarians fail because most, usually the contrarian view is wrong. You have to find that needle in the haystack where everybody thinks you're wrong, but it turns out you're actually right. And that, I think, turned out to be very, very difficult. And there is this criticism of him that he ended up enriching himself at the expense of Sears shareholders, but the numbers don't really tell that story, do they? No, I don't think that's a fair criticism at all. I mean, he's still very, very wealthy. He certainly has done very well, but his net worth has sunk precipitously because he invested so much of his own money. He loaned so much of his own money two Sears, and he worked really, really hard. Again, I will give him credit for that. Now, what I will say in, in criticism of it, I think uh, the vision here never really adapted to the post-financial crisis world. It never really adapted with the speed with which Amazon was taking over uh, mass distribution retail, the advantages it had. And also, I never could get an answer from him, really. Like, they said, oh, we wanted to be customer-centric, but I never got a clear answer to who the Sears customer is or was and how Sears could serve them in a way that neither Walmart on one side or Amazon on the other could. What did he say the mistake was or what led to the downfall of the business? He felt that his biggest mistake was that he didn't realize how tough it was to turn, to change the fundamental culture of Sears. Sears was an old line, traditional retailer that measured success by sales per square foot and was all about get the merchandise in and get it out. It was not a nimble, agile, digital, let's try this, let's fail, let's try this, let's try this. No. I mean, he was trying to move an aircraft carrier, and I mean, by his own admission, he, he couldn't he, do he it. he stopped investing in stores. He didn't market. He didn't feel that that was an appropriate use of funds. I mean, some of those seem to be basic mistakes. Well, the, all the traditional retailers said that was a basic mistake. I, I don't necessarily disagree with him on that, because I don't think nicer oh. stores would save Sears. I mean, as he put it, right. we were never going to be Bloomingdale's. Just as and, a counterfactual to that, since he bought Sears, since he put Kmart and Sears together, J.C. Penny's down 98%. Yeah, they've I mean, spent a lot of money trying to make it work. Their stores look really nice, and it didn't. It didn't help. So I, I don't think he was really wrong about that. He was trying to invest in the digital platform, the Sears My Way thing, using data to cater people's needs. But that's super capital intensive. And when you had Sears and shareholders, they weren't giving the benefit of the doubt the way Amazon was. Nobody said, oh, you can have 20 years of losses and we'll let you invest billions in a, in a big new digital platform. The real estate cushion wasn't big enough, right? I mean, like, did you ever get a straight answer on what, how much house money he was playing with? In other words, what he originally got control of Kmart for in terms of cash outlet? I mean, because it's really hard to retrace exactly what his it profit is, and loss is on this whole thing. It is hard, although there's a, nice, there's a good article in the Times today as well that tries to sort of sort through all those those numbers. It's really really hard. I mean, he didn't he didn't really address that. I, I took from your column. He, he also had trouble hiring the right talent. Yes, he did. I mean, some of that was just not getting the right people, and then he had somebody who had a, a illness in the family who had to quit after after two years. Um, I think that was a deeper problem, though. I mean, again, you have this the controlling shareholder him, you know, as the chairman, and then you try to put a CEO in there, he has a very, very clear vision. Do you get a, a traditional retailer wasn't probably the right answer, but a non-traditional retailer didn't seem to understand the basics of keeping the trains running. Yeah. That was a, that was a real he did, challenge. He did make the mistake of buying back an awful lot of stock, Jim, at he a did. lot higher levels, I think over $3 billion for a company that the indebtedness is what eventually sunk it. Right. Not smart. And I think, you know, 
he, when his vision didn't sort of pan out, I think he turned to every financial air engineering trick in the books, and I don't think those ever really what, do anything to prolong the life of a company like that.